In this video, we'll be looking at the second stage of protein synthesis, which is called translation. In our previous video, we'll be, uh, we've been talking about the process of transcription, where uh, the DNA is transcribed to make messenger RNA or mRNA, and the mRNA leaves the nucleus through the uh, uh, nuclear pore to get to these ribosomes. And um, these snowman-looking things here are actually the ribosomes. Ribosomes are made up of two uh, subunits, a, a small and a large subunit, and they are basically made up of proteins and also ribosomal RNA. And here we'll look at the process of translation in a bit more detail. So in the beginning, we need to think about what other different things. So in the first step, we got the ribosome here, and the RNA actually gets attached along the middle like that. And here you need to understand a bit about the different components of translation. So here we have our ribosome here, which is attached to the mRNA. And our mRNA will have codons. Now a codon is a combination of three bases next to each other, which codes for one amino acid. So for example, we can have ACG or AUG or um, CGG, whichever combination. And each of these combinations can code for a specific amino acid. But keeping in mind they're degenerative, so which means that you can have slightly changes to the uh, codon, which can code for the same amino acid. And now we have another component, uh, which is called transfer RNA or tRNA. What's so special about is uh, about tRNA is that they are made up of RNA nucleotides as well, and they have three bases of the bottom bit there, and they are called the anticodons. And these anticodons are complementary to the codons. And we say that each of these uh, RNAs, they each carry a specific amino acid. Simply put, if let's say we have a codon here uh, that is complementary to the anticodons there, and that will correspond to the correct amino acid. If we got a different codon, then you get another tRNA with that specific anticodon combination and that specific amino acid coming in. So those are the different components that you need to be aware of. And we also say that that loop there is called the anticodon loop, that contains the anticodon, obviously. Let's say the first bit is when the mRNA is attached to the ribosome there, then the second bit is that the tRNA will bind to the start codon of mRNA, so like this. So let's say in this tRNA carries the amino acid for the start codon, which is usually methanine. And what happens in the next bit is that another tRNA with the anticodon complementary to the next codon next to the uh, the first one will bind as well. So let's say uh, the next bit we've got this other three codon there, like so. Then we've got a different tRNA binding in like that with the anticodon. It carries a different amino acid, so I'm going to use green as a representation. And what happens next is that this amino acid will then be transferred to uh, the next amino acid and by forming a peptide bond. And this process is catalyzed by an enzymatic component of the ribosome called the peptidyl transferase. As the name implies, transferring a monopeptide to it. So it will then look like this um, in this stage. So I'm just drawing, these are the tRNAs, a bit enlarged. So you can see here that this amino acid was originally joined in this tRNA, but now it's transferred onto the second amino acid and that there's a peptide bond there. And when that happens, this tRNA is then released out of the ribosome and to attach to a free amino acid of that specific blue one there again. And they will come back to add on to it again if there's another blue amino acid. In that sense, the ribosome will move that way, uh, will move sideways to continue reading the rest of the mRNA strand. And so here you can see that there's another tRNA with a different amino acid. So again, peptotransferase moves uh, this chunk here to the next amino acid, joining them through a peptide bond. The process repeats itself again and again until you get a whole strand that looks like this. So as you can see, uh, we've got the tRNAs here that are now free of amino acids and they will leave. Then uh, you can see that the amino acid chain has been built uh, with, and they're joined by peptide bonds and uh, like this. And as the chain extends, it will kind of extend out of the ribosome. And once it leaves the ribosome, the other bonds can start forming, uh, twisting the amino acid chain into secondary and tertiary structures. Um, and this is because of the different properties of the amino acids. Keeping in mind that around surrounding this area here is uh, the cytoplasm, and the cytoplasm contains lots of lots of water and ions and etc. For example, 
because there's water, there will be hydrophobic interaction. So the hydrophobic amino acids will hide in the middle of it, shielded by the hydrophilic amino acids on the outside. So they will just naturally organize and rearrange themselves into a specific secondary and tertiary structure as they leave the uh, ribosome. So here we will have a quick recap. The first step, we've got mRNA binding to the ribosome. Then a tRNA with a complementary anticodon and the specific amino acid will bind to the mRNA's codon. Then another tRNA with the same concept will bind to the next complementary codon, uh, right next to it. After that, the first amino acid uh, from the first tRNA will bind to the second amino acid through peptide bond, and this is catalyzed by peptidyl transferase, an enzymatic component on the ribosome. After that, the ribosome will move along the mRNA, uh, the first tRNA leaves, and then a third tRNA with the third amino acid will come and bind to the uh, codon on the mRNA. And this process continues uh, until we reach the end codon. And as the amino acid chain leaves the uh, ribosome, it will curl up uh, to form a secondary or tertiary structure uh, because of the different interactions with the uh, environment around it. And there you have it, this is the process of translation.